This is the last video you need to learn how to get a six pack. Yeah, what's your go-to? What's your split? Share it with us. Let me know if you think these are overrated or underrated. Yeah, um, I would say underrated then because I do them all the time and they, I feel like they are one of the best exercises to progressively overload on. It's overrated for developing the abs and making them like, you know, I mean, okay, at the sure. end of the day, I think it is mostly diet. Do you have a particular diet that you adhere to or do you, or do you believe in flexible dieting? Are there any foods that you can't live without? To get your six pack, is there something that you do that not many other people do? Can you reveal that? Have you always wanted abs? Do you spend hours in the gym a week grinding, but not getting that six pack that you can show off at the beach? Or are you just starting out and you want the step-for-step -step guide on how to get them the fastest? Well, today, our guest lifts the lid on the six pack blueprint so you can rinse and repeat his method and bring your six new friends to the next time you hit the beach. Welcome back to Fitness Facts, where we dispel fitness myths with facts and use science to get you fit now and for good. If you're finding value in our information, go for one rep of hitting the like button and superset it with subscribing if you're on YouTube. And if you're listening on any other podcast platform like Spotify or Apple, it's just one rep of hitting the follow button so you don't miss a fact. On today's episode, there's blood in the water as we welcome New Zealand's very own Gymshark sponsored athlete. He's an all natural bodybuilder with over a decade of experience, literally Goku from Dragon Ball Z in real life. Boxy Xiong, Boxy, welcome to the show. Wow, I did not expect that kind of introduction. I mean, I, I, I heard I heard the one you guys did for Henry, but, um, you know, I was wondering what mine would be like. I was, I'm pretty impressed. Good job, guys. <laughs> oh, that's all Shabby. Pleasure. Pleasure. He's, got, he's got the English language master. <laughs> that voice as well, man. You've got I a radio know. voice. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm extremely honored and privileged to be on New Zealand's most anabolic podcast after this guest. <laughs> like, I love Henry that. <laughs> you know, I'm a... Woo! Still I mean, that I'm, a anabolic I'm, podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm going after the like, greats like Henry Lin. I see in pro, so I, I don't know how this is going to go, but I'll try my best. <laughs> what a lineup, eh? What a lineup that we have, honestly. Uh, we're just so privileged to... Honestly, just I'm really happy as well just to have all you guys on. Um, I think we all pretty much started maybe 10 years ago, around the same time. Like me, you, Henry. I guess that was the golden era. Uh, of uh i guess auckland university <laughs> lifting um yeah for those that you don't know um i know i guess it's like with aucklanders we're just especially asians we're just so there's a small circle of us so especially those that lift right yeah it gets even more niche right it's, it's, it's getting bigger though man it's getting, it's getting bigger. bigger which is great yeah because we'll yeah. talk about that later about how mm. i guess the whole sort of um getting younger people lifting more weights mm. not lifting more weights but sorry younger people uh, getting into weightlifting at an uh, earlier age yeah. and just you know compared to sort of when i first started till now it's definitely more mainstream and i think for you boxy i feel like you definitely represent i guess that new generation of up-and-coming um, bodybuilders um so that you you uh, youtube influence the fitness space so i guess uh the first question is um can you talk about your journey and how did you get started Honestly, man, um, that Dragon Ball Z line is pretty good comparison. It's pretty relevant, to be honest, because I'm sure like many of us our age, we watched Dragon Ball Z growing up, right? It was the show to watch after school. And it was probably like my first introduction into a beautiful male muscular body. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that. And then uh, you could say, so you could say subconsciously, I was pretty inspired by Dragon Ball Z. But then, and then like after, you know, all those after, after school programs, after watching it, every day after school, I got, um, I was obsessed with kind of getting abs. <laughs> um, and I started by first doing, you know, that P90X. I don't know if you guys remember that. Oh, we're going way back now. P90X. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, oh, oh, man. Oh, man. This is, I, this is yeah. with the 90s babies. Yeah, man. Like the... yeah, that, that's actually my first kind of introduction to like, I guess, lifting, you could say. I was doing the Ab Ripper X program like three times a week. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. so like, um, I'm, I'm just sort of picturing because I sort of went through that phase of like, you mm. know, before you go to bed, I used yeah. to do like the you know, push-ups, sit-ups, yep. 
you know, uh, you know max failure. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like full, like burning sensation. And yeah. you're like, this is going to get me, <laughs> this is going to get me shredded. This is yep. going to take me to the light. Yeah. Um, and so, so how, what age were you when you first started doing that whole um, P9X? So I think I was around 14, actually, 13, 14. I was just starting high school and I was, you know, obsessed with getting abs. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We still are. We still are. Yeah, I think, still are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because how old are you now, Boxy? I'm 29 now. So, so, so yeah. yeah. So almost double your life yep. time. Yeah. Uh, and it's still that pursuit of abs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and wanting to stay shredded. So... <laughs> When did you first, I guess, walk into the gym? Um, so that was when I was, I think, 15 or 16, actually. Um, I I got roped into it by one of my friends in high school who had just discovered Ziz on 4chan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah, the back of the, oh, yeah, back, throwing you back again, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I was actually one of, you know, that he actually discovers this very early on, you know. I mean, like, nowadays you talk about, uh, but, I mean, like, a lot of guys know about him after his death but this was actually before mm. his death and he was just posting on i think it was like b fit or r fit or something i can't remember what they're called on 4chan but yeah he kind of um told me about him and like i watched some of his videos and i was pretty inspired and kind of got me into the gym i was playing football at the time as well so i thought it would you know help me out with that as well yeah yeah and so for those that you know don't know about ziz but basically <laughs> uh to put it this way it was like the era of pre-youtube fitness <laughs> So this was when there weren't really high quality camera phones. Uh, you couldn't really find much information around evidence-based, I guess, lifting, exercise or nutrition. So there was a lot of bro science going around. Um, how I obtained information was just on bodybuilding.com on the forums <laughs> where strangers will give you <laughs> unsolicited, like the worst advice for eating. <laughs> Like, like just the worst advice for lifting weights. Some of those but programs are shocking. Some man. of those programs, looking back, like, just shocking. And yep. if you didn't experience it, um, I guess you were fortunate <laughs> because we made a lot of mistakes. And I think Boxy will talk about that later about if you could go back in time, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah, let's do it now. Let's do it now, actually. If you could go back in time, like, take yourselves back to 15-year-old Boxy, mm -hmm. what, I guess, would be the five advice or five things that you would tell your younger self about exercise or nutrition well when i first started I, it lasted about three months and then i stopped for like five years <laughs> so i, I tell oh, myself to, <laughs> yeah really i didn't yeah, know that yeah, yeah. so okay. I, I would tell myself to keep going firstly <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um second um i guess focus more on your nutrition like i've i grew up eating mcdonald's man like i'm a mcdonald's kid and yeah like I think I ate from in high school. I, my granddad would like walk all the way to because he couldn't drive. He'd walk to McDonald's and like I would have written my order down on a like paper man, note. For the him. original yeah. Uber Uber the Heat. Yeah, man. Man. He was, <laughs> I, I feel so bad now thinking back. He would like he would like go to no McDonald's. Tip. It was like it was like a twenty five no minute tip. walk as well. Yeah. No tip. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, focus on my nutrition. Just you know, obviously, just eat a bit healthier. Um, third. Uh, what else would I tell myself? Five, man. That's a lot, eh? <laughs> Bitcoin, invest in Bitcoin, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a big one. <laughs> yeah. What did you, uh, would you like tell yourself to maybe like, I don't know, like for myself personally, I tell myself, oh, focus on compounds. Like, like get, um, get, get you, your, get your squats, get your bench prep, you know, don't yes focus on the curls. No. Yes, yes and no. no okay. Because, you know, like I did focus on compounds when I started and now looking back, I'm like, Maybe I shouldn't have put so much focus on them. My body's like pretty wrecked and like. <laughs> oh, yeah, controversy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So big compound controversy. Right? You're going I against mean, the like, grain. Oh, uh oh. Yeah, go, yeah but um, I would say yes. Learn the compounds. Yes, like you know, learn and do them well, like with good form. Were you? Is there one thing that you'd say you made that was a really big mistake when it comes to training and nutrition that you could tell yourself? Is there something that you're like, I wouldn't have done that. Hmm. Yes, I used to train extremely high volume. So like, I don't know if you've heard of Smolov Jr. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it was like, you know, like 10 sets of three and like seven sets of five, five sets of seven. And it's like all in one week of like one exercise. So I kind of screwed my body up doing that. I feel like, um, especially my knees and my elbows, it's like mm. tendonitis and like that, that still flares up very often. So 
I would tell myself not to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so for, for those that don't know, Small Off is basically like a powerlifting program, and mm. it's like ridiculous in terms of the volume. Like, they got you benching every day, basically. Yeah, it's like four um, times a week. Yeah, yeah. And there's one for squats. So, yep. you're squatting like four times a week. And, and yeah. yeah, like, um, I've ran that program a few <laughs> times, and it's, it's shocking. <laughs> like like you need to be on you, gear you, you, you gotta you make gains though I, i'll tell you that yeah. you do make gains but it's very temporary <laughs> yeah and, and you i feel like you always have to be some taking some sort of like you know you'll be on gear i reckon juice to really yeah. run it properly because i also you know didn't listen to advice with like i think you're not meant to do any accessories while you run it yeah and i i did bodybuilding accessories while i was running it so. <laughs> All right, yeah. like 40 sets yeah it was basically ridiculous. yeah yeah so looking back you just tell yourself you know lower the volume yeah, lower, lower the intensity volume. take your yeah. time yeah take nice. your time be patient hey cool. yeah cool so shavi i'll hand it back to you yeah so you've got a lot of achievements in bodybuilding and fitness uh what's the biggest one for you so far i don't feel like i do <laughs> <laughs> i'm very new to bodybuilding actually so i've only my first cop was just last year so I, and then I barely ever competed in powerlifting. I was kind of just like a social powerlifter, I guess. <laughs> I was just, yeah, like I knew a lot of powerlifters talked to them, but didn't really do the competitions, which just never interest me enough, I guess. Fair so, enough. Yeah, yeah I, I guess my biggest, biggest accomplishment in the industry would be getting recognized by Gymshark. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, which, which, flex that. Yeah, which I'm unsure why they picked me for still, but yeah. Well, let's it's talk cool. about that. How did that partnership come about? Um, I guess it started because I just started posting content on my social media while I was on my bodybuilding prep. Um, I've always enjoyed creating content, but, um, oh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually pretty into photography and was mainly posting photography content before that, before the fitness stuff happened. And then, um, what happened was I made a fitness TikTok account actually, because I didn't want, I guess my friends seeing all my like all my half naked photos and videos <laughs> so i thought oh yeah i'll make a tiktok it'll be pretty anonymous and i'll just like post on there and stuff like who cares if other people see it kind of thing and then um i remember vividly i posted this video it was like this is what seven and a half years of natural bodybuilding looks like and it was just me like practicing my posing in my garage and then like overnight i got like 100k views and like a heap of comments and stuff which i was like really really shocked by and then I was like, oh, maybe I can, you know, roll with this. So I just like keep posting more and more and people really seem to enjoy it and like it got good feedback. So yeah, at, but at that point I was still pretty like skeptical about posting these things onto my Instagram. It's like trying to hide it from my friends a bit, but then like people started seeing it and they were like messaging me and like, oh, yo, you posted, it. Like, this is you, right? And like, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just, you know, trying TikTok a bit. <laughs> Cause like, you know, there's like a stigma with TikTok, right? Especially with our age, right? <laughs> Like that's for the kids. <laughs> Damn, um, they, they found your OF basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Link in bio. You could say that. It, it felt like that, man. <laughs> Damn. That, yeah. oh. But then okay. um, eventually, I was like, "Oh, these guys are all seeing it anyway." So I just started posting on the Instagram too. And then, um, before I knew it, I had like you know like fifty thousand followers on Instagram and TikTok as well. And that's about the time when Gymshark sent me an email, and I was like the heck is this like mm. i opened it i thought it was one of those scam emails right because i was like why would Gymshark be emailing me <laughs> not the then, nigerian prince yeah yeah <laughs> I, I yeah i definitely expected it to be a scam and even when i read it i was like this is a scam and then i had to like look up the person on linkedin <laughs> um but yeah um so they reached out and they just said would you like some free Gymshark gear like we really like what you're doing in the natural bodybuilding scene um, and I, at that point I had no idea what it would lead to. I was just like, oh yeah, of course I want some free gear and, uh, uh yeah, gear as, you know, <laughs> clothing. <laughs> yeah. Natural body. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> yeah, FYI. Uh... FYI, I'm natty. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. And then a week later they were like, oh, we have this campaign going and, you know, we would love for you to join as a, you know, affiliate. And then they gave me a like contract and I was like, well, this is really cool. Like. I'm actually going to be representing Gymshark. And I guess that's how it all started. That's awesome. So when did that come about then? Um, that would have been 
actually earlier this year. So I think it would have been April this year. So April 2023. So about six months ago. Nice. So you're fairly new. So how is it so yeah. far? Oh, really, really good. Surprising. <laughs> like they send you a lot of stuff. I tell you that. Like every month they have like drops, right? And then you kind of can pick like a certain amount. And then they'll just like ship it to you, like usually express. And then they just expect you to, you know, make a post about it. They usually give you like a slight brief on like what they want. So it's, it's been really good. But um, being in New Zealand, we're a bit far away. So the stuff usually comes to me maybe like a day or two before the deadline. So it's like a real scramble for me to like create something. Are, are you like ever um, trying to hook up for the boys or? You know, your, your girlfriend, be, uh, no, actually not your girlfriend, your, your soon to be, your wife, my actually, wife, your wife, wife now, man. Congratulations, by the way. Congrats. Thank you, man. Um, Thank you. So do you ever be like, yeah, yeah, could I get the, uh, the t-shirt? I'm a size uh, small. <laughs> for, for, for me, for me. And like, uh, and a hoodie, I'm, double XL. Like, do you ever try to like tell Jim I've, 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 I've been too scared to do that in all honesty. I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> I mean, my, my girlfriend wears my hoodies anyway, so it's like, oh, my wife, sorry. My wife wears my hoodies anyway, yeah. just oversized, right? But, like, the other stuff, I'm like, because uh, they send you, like, obviously the male brief, right? The male stuff. So, I obviously, I can't get any, any of the female stuff. And then, like, I think they'll be real skeptical if all of a sudden I'm, like, an extra small. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so extra no, I, I haven't tried that just yet. But, like, you know, for other people same size as me like mm. <laughs> yeah 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 like i might need a four of those i need yeah. four of those uh <laughs> yeah. nice man oh uh, and now also uh before uh we get to anything else i just want everyone to know your your strength numbers because it's really impressive and they can find oh, yeah. it on your tiktok but can you just tell people your max bench max squat your max deadlift at okay. your, and what body at what body weight yeah so most of these were done probably at a body weight of 83 to uh, like 85 kilos i'd say and when i'm like you know competition staged lean i'm like 74 kilos so that's just a good reference i'm like 10 kilos lighter when i'm like lean so this is yeah quite a significant higher body fat um i think my bench is 160 kilos far oh my, my squat is pretty awful i think it's 215 kilos <laughs> um, that, that's actually terrible for powerlifting standards, by the way. <laughs> Bro, trust me, trust me. Two, when you start the weight with two something, 200 and something kilos, you're good, man. You're good. At 84, 85 kilos. Oh my God. And what's your deadlift, yeah. man? So um, sumo doesn't count, but sumo is 297. No, 292.5. Bruh. And I, uh, <sighs> bench, conventional is 272. That's insane. That's so you basically almost 300 kilo deadlift. If you almost. count, I've, I've, I was chasing that for quite some time and missed it like four times. So, oh, <laughs> let's, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I, yeah, like I just want people to understand, like, it's just not the aesthetics that you've sort of like went down. You went down the righteous path of powerlifting, you know, yeah, like you, yeah. you, you, you did, you know, you, you sacrificed your joints, <laughs> yes, you gained definitely. arthritis for these numbers which was meaningless looking back but you did it <laughs> but fully it's cool worth it. fully worth yeah. it right fully yeah. worth it yeah um yeah uh, um shavi sorry right. go back to you man all right let's let's go through the training so take us through six pack blueprint maybe it's not even training so if somebody wanted abs in your opinion what's the first thing somebody should think about should they go to the gym should they look at their diet what's number one I mean, at the end of the day, everyone has abs, right? Because it's just a muscle. So I guess if you really just wanted to show it, I would focus on the diet and just lose body fat. Um, but not everyone wants to look like a skeleton. <laughs> so um, I guess it's about balance, right? But I guess number one would be diet. But you've got to balance that with weightlifting if you want to you know, look like somewhat muscular while ha having abs <laughs> yeah. and so if somebody wanted abs should ab exercises in themselves be what they're focusing on or should there be a more holistic focus on the whole body and then the abs will come talk me through that um i definitely think it should be a more holistic focus uh, you should you know improve little aspects of your life till you reach a bigger goal i think just focus on the small changes um so obviously diet is a big part of it and then exercising is another big part of it. So um, 
yeah so it's just about making small changes and just that it, it, that affect your you know bigger outcome in the end in my opinion yeah okay so more holistic approach let's talk resistance training then if somebody only had five exercises they're, they're, that's all they can do what would those be? What would be your top five exercises? Ooh, <laughs> let me think about this. Do they need to have legs? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> 10 years ago, I would have said no, but <laughs> I've matured. Um, if, yeah, I would say probably some kind of squat movement. So barbell squat, hack squat, some form of squat movement preferably a barbell squat i would say actually just a compound um yeah because it's five exercises i would actually tend to lean towards the compounds in this case mm -hmm. so um a deadlift maybe it could be romanian but like deadlift off the floor is a great exercise for your overall you know, development anyway um probably a pull-up variation yeah uh, maybe just like a body weight pull up or weighted pull up. Um, is that three? That's three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't got a chest one. Um, I'm not a big fan of the bench press, to be honest. Oh. So, uh, for for hypertrophy, anyway. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Go on. Okay. Because I do feel it. You know, it's not suited for everyone's body type. Um, and you know, you don't get maximum range of motion on a barbell bench press, in my opinion, because why is that? It kind of just because it kind of stops where your chest is, right? Whereas if you use dumbbells, you can go a bit further, and you I... can kind of change the path to what suits your body. I love that you assume people touch their chest. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Yeah, that's too generous, man. Generalization. <laughs> I, I, I wish. I wish most people touch yeah. their chest. <laughs> that's <laughs> but, yeah there you go but that's you know that's limiting the range even more if they don't so yeah and i'm a big advocate for training in the full rep range of motion my guy my guy yeah so i would say a dumbbell chest press maybe like an incline <laughs> incline dumbbell chest press would Is you say oh sorry bro go on there's one more right yes one more shavi yeah one more um what am i missing i think i'm missing shoulders uh probably because we've got dumbbell chest press for like your front delt kind of area i would say like a medial delt movement might be better so like a lateral raise of some sort yeah nice so um i guess in terms of like you know if we if we so this is basically general these exercises um just to recap it was a squat pattern mm -hmm. it was a deadlift so a hinge <laughs> movement Mm -hmm. uh you have a dumbbell chest press yeah right? yeah uh and the last two was sorry a, a pull up uh, uh, pull up pull up yeah pull up yeah. and then a lateral the lateral over. Yeah, yeah yeah for yeah. the for the for the doubts yeah so then with abs right if we if we go go into abs um before you actually get into ab exercises i i thought i'd get your opinion on this because i'm when i'm bulking right mm -hmm. as in just just being greedy and being a being a fat you know slob being a, just being a slob yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm trying to find a find a, find a but this is slob right my excuse is like oh i can't see abs right mm -hmm. so i'll just i'll just lift weights but i'm not gonna do any ab exercises right mm -hmm. and then when i'm cutting i'm like well obviously i'm gonna start seeing my abs and then i'll be bothered <laughs> to do like ab exercises you know weighted crunches or sit-ups right yeah do you do you when you're bulking or cutting do you do abs throughout the year like do you do it every single time or do you pick your phases where so you i personally do abs year round because you know when you're bulking is technically when you're putting on the most muscle right and mm -hmm. if you want your abs to grow you need to be putting your muscle onto them so it doesn't really make sense to me why you wouldn't train abs in the you know when you're bulking as well so um to be honest i think it's more important to train your abs when you're bulking versus when you're cutting because most of, like I said, most of the muscle is being built in the bulk phase. And then you're just revealing it in the cutting phase. But obviously some kind of resistance when you're cutting will hopefully make you retain more of what you've built as well. Yeah, it's just something about, 
training the muscle yeah. that you can't see. Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah, yeah, agree I'm, with I'm, that. Me being a fat slob doing <laughs> sit-ups and just being like, it's, it's there somewhere. And, and, and it gets harder when you're bulking, man. It's yeah, man. horrible. It's, there's, no, there's no ab pump. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. There's no ab pump. Like, yeah. I could be a puffy, you know, fat man, and then you get the, you get the abs, <laughs> you know, you get the chest pump, you get the, get the thick arm pump, yep, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no ab And the pump. thing is, like, you know, having mm. a ab pump, per se, is making your waist look thicker too so it's like you're getting better when you like train abs <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah let's let's uh, get into it um Shavi, i think you're gonna ask him about this yeah the abs so, so well so yeah so uh you say you train abs all year round where does that fit in sort of the weekly split a lot of people including myself will just throw in body weight ab exercises at the end of chest day or something like that do you separate it out or do you include it just like we do but the weighted ab exercises at the end of some other day so um personally i feel like my abs have developed into a place where i'm like reasonably happy with them like i don't really want them to get much bigger i guess and it's hard to anyway so i do throw them at the end of my currently on my push day so that's twice a week and that is still weighted exercises, but um, I do I do a hanging leg raise, which isn't weighted, and then I do like a weighted cable crunch, so that I don't really try to progressively overload on them so much nowadays. But I did when I started, and there was a time when I was quite focused on growing them, and they would be you know that they would usually start my workouts off. So it's it's changed a bit over time, and it kind of depends on your goals. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm going to give you a series of ab exercises, a couple of them you just mentioned. Uh, <laughs> and these all include sort of core as people sort of, you know, incorporate abs and core. And I want perhaps both of you, let me know if you think these are overrated or underrated. So weighted ab crunches, and maybe this can include either the, like a machine, like a standalone machine or cable. Go ahead, Boxy. I thought you were going to start. <laughs> you're, the, you're, you're the one with abs. I think out of us three, you're the only one with abs at the moment, bro. Not, not right now, anyway. I'm bulking out, too. <laughs> Just, yeah. Oh. Um, weighted ab crunches. Uh, underrated or overrated? So, is that technically just good or bad? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say underrated, then, because I do them all the time, and they, I feel like they one of the best exercises to progressively overload on because it's quite easy to progressively overload you can kind of increase the weight decrease the weight quite easily yeah yeah i agree um if, if it's the weighted uh crunches uh is it you, um are you sort of referring to the 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 rope attachment yeah. behind yeah, rope your head attachment. yeah and you're sort of um giving yourself like bjs B yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're blowing yourself. Oh, no, we'll, 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 we'll cut this in post. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, like you're, 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 yeah. So you're basically like in that vulnerable I mean, position I, I've, I've on seen... your knees, on your knees, like yeah, yeah. I've I've seen this exercise done like wrong a lot. So yeah, I would I would say that people it's 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 quite a actually quite difficult exercise. I feel like to get right and to really feel in your abs because people just end up like using their biceps or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, you don't need yeah. much weight. Um, yeah. I think people forget, like, the breathing. You want to breathe yes, out as well too, when you crunch yeah. in. And really, you know, like, try and curve the spine, I think, is another thing that I don't see that happening enough. Mm. Nice. Yep. Uh, I agree. That's one of the harder ones to sort of just, you know, you lay the towel down, you get on your knees, <laughs> and then... <laughs> You grab you grab both sides of the rope and <laughs> they look like balls. Yeah, uh, it's just and it's, then the hard and then the hard work begins. So it's, it's, you it's, know. It's, maybe it's the way that we're talking about ab exercises, is... right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I am. I don't know about you guys. Maybe it's just the way that it looks that it's just discouraging for many guys out there yeah i mean getting on your knees in itself is a really quite discouraging right? it, <laughs> it took us like 20 years of like you know um lgbt marching to, to get men to do hip thrusts yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah. I, I took yeah. like two decades yeah. in the like the you know what i'm saying like Xiaomi, yeah. like i've only seen 
men do the barbell hip thrusts and the glute bridges only recently. Yeah. And but now like, they, you... they face outwards to the gym. They'll stare someone in the yeah. eye and then just do the hip thrusts. <laughs> right at yeah. Them. Yeah. I love that. But <laughs> if you told me 10 years ago to do barbell hip thrusts, it's, it's not happening, man. Like, no. I, I'm not doing the... <laughs> uh, equality what goes both say? ways. You know? We can yeah, do hip thrusts yeah. too. Like, now I'm seeing a lot of guys do the abductor machine. Oh, yeah. you, know, you know, and I'm like, oh, man, yeah. we're, we're, it's a different generation, Xavi. It's, it's not a, <laughs> yeah. it's not like all, the old all days. All for the better. All for the better. All for the better. <laughs> all for the better. Uh, but yeah, sorry, go on. It's the, what's right. the next one? Next one, hanging leg raise. Um, underrated as well. Um, I think it's one of the best exercises for, you know, your lower core. Um, and it's actually really good for loosening your hip flexors as well. Um, something that's, you know, I, I noticed when um, I stopped doing them for a while, I, I found that I couldn't get into my like deadlift or sumo deadlift position because everything just felt tight. So then I realized it's because I stopped doing the hang leg raises. Um, again, another exercise to, that's done wrong quite a lot as well. I see people swinging a lot and not really using their core at all. Um, and people, you know, because you can do obviously the like, knee up variation which is a bit easier and i think people should all start with that but i see people just try to progress straight into the leg raise and their whole kind of just swinging their whole body and i don't think they're really using their core at all in that case mm, mm. yeah yeah for me um with someone with tight hips hip flexes hip flexes um years and years of just not stretching and immobility uh this is a great exercise that doubles not just an ab exercise but a stretch for me um, the last time I trained with uh, Boxy, I think maybe two months ago. Yeah, it's quite a while um, ago. Quite a while ago. Um, yeah, I, I could barely do a, a hang knee raise properly. And, and he saw me. He was uh, terrible. I had terrible mobility. Because <laughs> you could do the full, like... Yeah, I've, the, I've, done, feet, I've done them consistently the for a while. Yeah, I've yeah, done them yeah. consistently for a while. So uh, I uh, keep them in my program mm, now. And, and I think I also dispels the myth of, like, you know, being muscular and flexible. Like, you'd be both. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that is the goal. You don't want to just be you know, mobile. <laughs> yeah. So I, I definitely rate it. And that's, it. And that's why I train full range of motion as well, I guess. The full raw, eh? Yeah. I love that. I love that. Awesome. Okay. Bicycle? I mean... Oh. <laughs> I, I'm going to say overrated. I hate it. I hate yeah. It. I hate uh, overrated it. because I hate it as well. But um, I remember doing this in P90X. <laughs> very vividly it was one of the exercises in there and it just felt like a hip flexor exercise in my opinion mm. it didn't really feel like a core exercise whereas the hang leg raise i feel like it's a better exercise you actually do feel a you know feel it in your core the bicycle is just purely hip flexors i feel which yeah yeah which you know doesn't contribute to making your abs look better i don't think it's hard for sure like it's but it's like one of those movements where I just chuck it in if it's a part of a circuit just to make you tired. Yeah. But in terms of like actually targeting the abs optimally, I, I probably wouldn't put that in that category. Awesome. Okay. Plank. Ooh. Um, ooh. Ooh, this is hard because like, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's, it's overrated for developing the abs and making them like, you know, grow but i think it's underrated for the stability that you get from it so like the core stability and the strength that you get from it um can i go in the middle here or <laughs> nah nah you gotta pick one this is this okay, is okay life or death i'm gonna say overrated then what would your opinion change if it's weighted planks no <laughs> Okay, so if you get yeah. your boy to put the ten kilo plate, uh, you know, on your back while you're holding that plank position, mm -hmm. you'd still be like, it's you know, nah, it's not gonna, not the optimal. I think, like pack. I said, I mm. think it's good for the reasons uh, for reasons that people don't do it for. I see. Yeah. The the non aesthetic reasons, the right yes. reasons. The... Yes, the right reasons, core yeah. stability, yeah. and yeah. yeah. I think it, I think it's pretty good for helping with your compound lifts. <laughs> mm. The right just think... path, Xavi. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I think people it's... people yeah. hold plank, which is the longest two minutes of their life, and then oh my god, yes. 
and then feel the burn and feel like that's that's abs but i think that's a common misconception is that right yes i think so yeah yeah i I mean i think there's people that can hold planks for ridiculous amounts of time like hours and stuff and i don't even think they look like they have a very developed core so damn shots fired (laughs) (laughs) sorry guinness world record holder of uh, plank (laughs) i'm pretty sure it's a thing yeah yeah i'd say i'd say in terms of just getting a six pack i agree because there's no like for me it's it's an iso it's an isolation movement Mm. so it's I'm, I'm just thinking about you know where's the contraction coming from right you're sort of yeah. just, ho- just holding that and that yeah. position and but i think yeah if you're if you're talking about um functionally mm. uh i, I, I definitely exercise. give give it yeah. a good exercise yeah. yeah nice okay wood choppers and i haven't done those in ages so that's that I mean, you're the one with the abs so yeah uh, so, so <laughs> I, I, I mean, was, yeah. Who does wood choppers? Let's be real. Has, when's the last time you see someone do wood choppers? Farmers. I uh, mean, so this is mainly for like kind of your like oblique <laughs> kind of area, right? Like, the, like twisting kind of movement. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like you see a I lumberjack, think... like just yeah, lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> you, see a, you see a kind of cables. Oh yes, I, I actually yeah, I remember doing those quite a while ago on the cables. I, I think it's an overrated movement. I don't not a big fan of it. I think there's better movements you could do for your obliques. Like, um, I guess it's like not a wood chopper, but using like a, say like a cable and a lap pull down and really just like going down, kind of like crunching that way. So it's like, I guess it's not a wood chopper, but it's, it's a similar movement. <laughs> do you, and do you, you train obliques? Sorry, shall we? No, no, Surprisingly, no, same, not that was... much. Yeah. Unagi, man. Yeah. <laughs> same, same way. Yeah. Unagi. So, so yeah. yeah, do you actually train direct obliques? No, I don't. And I don't uh, feel like you need to a lot of the time. Yeah. I just as I suspected. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, some people think that if you train obliques then they get thicker, then you end up looking a bit a bit fatter. I mean, that right? um that's that I think that's specific to that one movement where people like hold like a weight on one hand and kind of like crunch towards it. But like I um I'm 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 kinda of torn as well. Like mm. I don't think you can grow it so much. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm on I'm on that sort of sort of I'm not sure because mm. Like they never taught us this at uni. Like, man, <laughs> careful guys. If you do too much oblique training, you're gonna be a block. Yeah. Like I don't think I've seen anyone that's like overdeveloped obliques. I mean, I mean, everyone's like, oh, look one, at him, he's so yeah. weird looking. He's the got only one obliques. you can think of is like Chol Soon, right? But he's like you know you know Chol Soon, the Korean bodybuilder. Yeah, but but that Korean bodybuilder is like six five. Like he's a giant. Yeah, and like and he's everywhere's also, yeah. yeah everywhere's, everywhere's, the, developed, of, everywhere's right? overdeveloped. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> You know, but like, if you took like the average guy walking on gym, I've never seen someone and be like, "Man, that guy's got really nice obliques." So, <laughs> yeah, he's got he's too yeah. much obliques. He's too, too yeah. many side, right? Like too many side crunches. Like, yeah. is it even possible? So, uh, yeah, the fact that you right now are saying that you don't even train obliques yourself, <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess oblique training for aesthetic purposes probably overrated. Overrated as a whole. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, we've run the hot takes. Hot takes. Um, we've run the yeah. Oh, don't worry, man. We got we we we, we mentioned the keto. Yeah, yeah. Uh, took down big podcasts. keto the other week. <laughs> yeah, there's big pharma, big keto. Uh, what else is there? There's big. What's the other one? Big well, shroom. One, yeah, big shroom is the that's the original <laughs> one. The, the mushrooms. Being in being yeah. a Portobello market, it's uh, big shroom. <laughs> So yeah. we've run the gambit of the ab exercises. Did we mention your go-to or what is your yeah. go-to? Yeah, what's your go-to? What's your split? Share it with us. For my whole split or my go-to for abs? Uh, start with the go-to for the abs. So like I said, right now I'm just doing a hanging leg raise and a weighted crunch. Um, so I used to do a... I've always had hanging leg raise in my kind of plan. I feel like that's kind of one of the best bang for your buck exercises. Um, and a decline setup, like a weighted decline setup, but that was specific when I was training at uni gym because I have a really good decline setup bench. <laughs> so I, I just really love that exercise at, at uni gym. But ever since moving gyms, I can't I haven't had that same kind of feeling. So I just switched that for a weighted cable crunch, which is essentially a similar thing. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, just those two basically. 
And I feel like that's all you need. Damn, that's uh, all those people right here, right now listening, man. They they got their <laughs> yeah. five or six different ad days. <laughs> well, they can exercises. lock in now. It's good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay, at the so... end of the day, I think it is mostly diet. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that, are there any foods that you can live that you can't live without? Give me three if, if there are any. Chicken and rice, man. <laughs> yeah, staple. That's a staple. Chicken staple. and rice. Staple. Yeah. Is that is that one food or two foods? <laughs> and one meal. That's a, a foods. Yeah, that's a one foods. Uh, what's the other two foods? <laughs> uh, big fan of egg whites. It's yeah, staple. Pretty staple. I guess eggs in general, right? Do you do you do like the do you throw away the the egg yolk? Nah. So I buy the egg white in the like sachet now, the refrigerated yep. sachet. Cool. Um, yeah, and I usually get through one of those sessions pretty quickly. Like it's like three days kind of thing. So, <laughs> so nice. never never gets the expiry date. Um, another thing, I guess I can't live without my protein shakes as well. To be honest, because um, it's just so convenient. Like I actually don't drink protein shakes every day. Um, like a lot of people would probably have a protein shake after every workout, but I don't really do that. And, I'm not a big fan of doing that. I like to have my protein from a variety of sources, but I can't live without my protein shake because of the convenience of it, because there's just some days where you just need, because I like to space out my protein in, you know, like many different windows. So uh, Oh, windows just... triggered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even though it doesn't matter much, like, as probably Henry probably mentioned, <laughs> but um, I just like to do that because it makes me feel more satiated and just in general, just, it feels like I perform better when I can have different, like spread out my eating windows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a protein shake for me is a convenience thing. And it's just an easy, quick way if I'm like really busy to get some protein in. Yeah. I mean, uh, I had my uh, anabolic window professionally installed uh, first year uni. <laughs> me too. Um, yeah, like me and Shavi, we we would time it, like you know, we're we'd... sprinting to my protein Sprint, shake. That, 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 yeah. that, oh man, the... get out <laughs> of my way! <laughs> that that sound you... of that. Yeah. Oh man, That's... did you did you guys bring that bring that into the into the gym with you? Oh like... hell yeah! I I I, I had <laughs> a science experiment you, going. You, you can't you can't risk you know being stuck in traffic or something yeah, on the way yeah. home and and miss the window. <laughs> going catabolic you know like like you know your, your your muscles are being eaten alive um as was explained you know through through those i guess yeah once again those forums yeah. those those goddamn <laughs> internet forums man it was paranoia i was reading it was madness man just reading everything um but yeah so so for you you know you you do do you have a particular diet that you adhere to or do, or do you believe in flexible dieting um I am pretty flexible, so I, I track macros and calories, um, and that's how I've done things for, oh, God knows how long now, like seven years or something. And it's, wow. Wow. Yeah. So that's yeah something that I do quite consistently. Obviously, there's periods where I just can't, and you know, like eating with family and things like situations. Oh, traveling. family. I hate, yeah, no. I hate it so <laughs> always, much. Always getting in the way of our oh, goals, right? I, I don't, don't let... <laughs> Man, <laughs> I, I hate them so much. Because <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because being Asian, right? Like, like you know, it's yeah. carb heavy, man. Like yeah, we talk, man. Shabby, you know, Filipino. And it's yeah. just carbs on carbs. It's just, it's just the, carbs just stack, the carbs are stacked against you. <laughs> this guy is master of puns. I know, I dude. That it. is that is a shirt, Shabby. That's a shirt. That is a yeah, shirt. Man, carbs are stacked. That's an yeah. awesome yeah. shirt. Write yeah. that down. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the cards are stacked against you. So um, when you're talking about tracking, right? I'm very curious because um, there's so many ways to track, you know, and you've said seven years. So clearly this is something that is, it works for you, your lifestyle um, and your personality. So can you run me through um, a blank canvas of how do you track your calories and how do you track your macros from finding out from step one? finding your your maintenance calories what what's what do you do you go on the internet what, what's tell us the protocol the exact protocol of boxy so what i would do is i would go on the internet first and go to like a 
TDEE calculator, so like a totally total daily energy expenditure calculator. Mm -hmm. And then in those, you can type in your stats. So like usually it asks for your age, your um, height, your weight, and your activity level. Six and foot. It will spit. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, as I was gonna say, so you put in I six mean, foot, obviously. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's, it doesn't go public, so you should lie in this. <laughs> it's not a dating profile, but um, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it usually spits out like a random number, and um, I would usually start with that number as like a kind of baseline. So then, what you would do is you would download a like calorie tracking app. I use my fitness pal personally, and I've used that for the whole time, basically. Um, and you would, you know, enter that number onto my fitness pal for your, as your like, your target calories for the day. And I think usually it gives you like some kind of like macro split as well, depending on your goals. Um, personally, I'm an advocate for like a higher carb, lower fat diet. It's just how I like to eat, um, but it's flexible. You could kind of make it work for you. Um, and then, yeah, I would track my body weight every morning for say like a week or two and work out the weekly averages and just mm. see how my weight is tracking. Um, if it's increasing, you're probably eating at a surplus. If it's decreasing, you're eating at a deficit and if it's staying relatively the same, you found your maintenance and you can work from there. So I would generally try to find my maintenance weight first. And then work up or down from there depending on my goals um yeah I, I don't know if you want to break down how to track the things in the app but the app is pretty easy to use in my yeah. opinion no 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 that that's a, exactly how i did it mm -hmm. um back in the days sort of the my fitness power you know you put your stats in and it spits mm -hmm. out a, a number right and obviously oh, so you so you use the my fitness power kind of stats and thing uh so yeah i was gonna say it's a rough estimate so i mm -hmm. wouldn't totally yep. rely on it yep. i'd say that's a guideline and like yep. you said you sort of eat at that yeah. number let's say it's mm -hmm. 2000 but mm -hmm. then you obviously see your weight so because yeah. if you eat and, at 2000 you still gain weight then yeah. you probably that yeah. 2000 you probably need to drop it down right yeah and yeah. the thing is your energy expenditure changes every day right because you're doing different activities and things so it's just like a, a round approximate number so it's not going to be 100 percent accurate but you can kind of like work from there yeah and and, and in terms of advice, what would, because obviously I'm guess I'm assuming, you know, most people with summer coming around here in New Zealand, people are looking to shred, to lose body fat. So they might listen to this podcast and say, oh, cool. I'm going to try this, my fitness pal for the first time. And let's say they give them a number, say 2000 calories is their maintenance calories. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how much of those calories would you drop below that maintenance calories? Would you recommend for people as a general um, rule? If, you know, if, you wanting to lose body fat kind of quickly i would probably just go into like a 500 calorie deficit at, at the start and then see how that tracks along um usually i aim to lose about you know one percent of my body weight per week when i'm cutting down oh cool or one one to 1.5 percent of my mm -hmm. body weight um when i'm cutting down and that's just like a ballpark figure for me that i feel like retains a, decent amount of muscle so obviously if you try to lose it at a really fast rate you probably you might start losing muscle which generally isn't the goal but you know some people don't care and they just want to get shredded <laughs> oh that that's called starving for stereo yeah. that that's yeah. uh yeah. starving, starving, for starving. Is that yeah <laughs> i think that's what happens i mean i mean that happened to me i was guilty of it where um i dropped the calories way too fast yeah way too quickly too soon yeah. um do you like for me, like, uh, I, I always do 5% each week, 5% five, five each week for the yeah. calorie drop. Yeah. So I tried to, yeah. That's, that's another thing. I don't tend to, you know, just drop calories every week kind of thing. Mm. I would, I would track my body weight consistently every morning and then get the weekly averages and just see how I'm tracking along. If things do start to slow down a bit, that's when I start to like make adjustments, but I do not think that you need to make adjustments every week. And I think it's kind of bad to. Because you just end up, you know, your body just keeps getting lower and lower and just like starts to, you know, um, mm. go into starvation mode, I guess, this thing. So then do you also use training as a way of feedback to how yes. your cut's going? So do you track like strength? Do yeah, you track so... like how many reps you can push out? Like let's say you dropped your, your, your strength. You could do 100 kilos of bench press mm -hmm. by 10 reps. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. but then week two you realize that you can only do eight reps is that sort of like a yeah. red flag is that sort of like a signal that oh i mean you're bound to lose some strength when you're mm. going into a deficit so it's it's about trying to keep training performance as high as possible yeah but um that's that's why i have that full part figure like i if i start to lose weight a bit quicker than that i generally will stop but uh, we'll increase the calories a little bit but um yeah i do i log book all of my training so i i do you know i do keep track of everything and make sure that you know i'm not losing too much strength and generally you don't if you're doing things um correctly but like obviously as your body weight goes down there will be things that you know that feel worse and will drop mm. so like you know using yourself as an example you know um i love bench press you know i think it's the the perfect <laughs> it's it's the it's the you know pound for pound the the king of bro yeah. movements right yeah you said that um you're about uh 106 160 kilos right was your one rm mm-hmm. bench press right yeah and you're at 85 kilos yeah let's just say cool. that yeah let's just say that so mm-hmm. at, um when you were at your leanest what was your max bench just want to get that so number. yeah as as i don't really you know i don't really max out when i'm at my leanest because i feel like the risk is too high okay but um i guess recently i did actually max out but i was around 77 kilos so definitely not my leanest but yeah i would say around you know 10 to 11 percent body fat yeah um and i got 130 but that's also not training bench press for like a year or in a year and a half or something so it's yeah. like not a, not a really accurate figure yeah but yeah it's i didn't lose as much strength as i expected let's just say that okay yeah so, even so... not doing the movement at all yeah so it's just like you know, for people that are listening, it's like, you know, you will expect a drop in strength numbers mm-hmm. uh, because I guess 85 to 77, that's about, you know, an eight kilo drop. Mm-hmm. And that's quite a lot of weight, right? Eight kilos, mm-hmm. especially if it's a, a you know, the majority of it's fat tissue. Yeah, you would, yeah. I hope so. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's probably not the case. <laughs> I think sometimes a lot of people get to, I guess, uh, maybe exaggerate the numbers too much. I don't know if you, you know, read a lot of um, I, I, I Hollywood. Feel like yeah oh i I, no i i I was gonna say i feel like some people want to lose strength when they're cutting like it's like a it's like they feel like it's expected so they just kind of like you know like oh yeah i'm losing strength Um, that means it's working kind of thing but no i think the goal should be to keep performance as high as possible Mm. so i don't train i don't really change my training a whole lot I, i might reduce the volume but in terms of like the like sets and reps and weight and stuff i would tend to keep that pretty similar mm so there's no like you know cutting phase training or bulking phase training. It's just really keep the I mean, everything the same, I, right? I mean, like I said, I reduce the volume a bit, mm-hmm. but like in terms Mat- of the, you know, the weight and the you know the yeah, the, yeah, I guess the weight and the intensity they'll be pretty similar. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I'm a big fan of like you know the NBA and the NFL, you know, and we mm-hmm. usually on Reddit we see the off season post, the classic uh, so and so has put on 25 pounds of muscle in the off season. Yeah. Yep. You know, you know, and we're yep. always just like, oh, here it comes, you know, and yeah. I just read that, you know, and just be like, you know, or some Hollywood A-list celebrity for an action film, you know, they put on 30 pounds of muscle. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, Classic. yeah, I was like, I don't think you know, that it's not true, right? Like, I'm just thinking like that just can't be true. Natural. No, I mean, I just, no, <laughs> they, they probably just put on 20 pounds <laughs> in general, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hmm. their, your recent Instagram post, um, was really cool. I, I like what you did. Basically, for those that don't know, you, you posted, um, uh, I was like a video of basically, you know, what, how, how much muscle you can obtain naturally for X um, amount of years for oh, same, I mean, at the same weight. Yeah. At the same weight, was it? Or was it? Uh, it was, no, it was three kilos heavier, I think. I was, after how many years? That was eight years or seven years or eight years. Yeah. That's so crazy. Was, like, like yeah. put that in perspective, guys. But then I, I also don't think I was, you know, 100% optimal. So I do think people can do it better than me. And yeah. I'm just giving like a guideline kind of thing. No, but I think it'll blow a lot of people's minds, like seeing that, like that number. Like, yeah. Because I remember when I was 16, I first started training. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put on like five kilos this year. Yeah. And then yeah. another five. That, that's the thing. You right? know, like, yeah, yeah. like yeah. 10 kilos of muscle is a lot on like most, like anybody's frame, I guess. <laughs> that's like so a lifetime like, yeah yeah some it's people like, that's that's the thing right like people think that you know you can get 50 kilos of muscle or whatever but 50 kilos of muscle you're probably like professional bodybuilders. 
Yeah, yeah. And I and I think that's one thing um I guess like advice to young people, would you say is is sort of like give them that realistic um perspective of of numbers wise? Like, you know, like you know, a lot of young people they might start lifting and they they, they let's say they gain three kilos over the summer holidays. Mm -hmm. But you wanna really tell them that just wanna let you know, FYI, like, <laughs> that three kilos probably isn't pure muscle. Mm -hmm. Um, is it, sorry, go on. Yeah, you about to say something? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Now you go on. Sorry, I, 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 I don't want to cut you off. Oh, no, no, no. I was just gonna say, like, you know, it's for me, that's even crazy to see that video being like, you know, seven years of hard, consistent training. You know, it's it's three kilos of lean muscle, but it's like that's that's the perspective of numbers that people yeah, need to be I mean, working with. At the end yeah. of the day, it probably wasn't three kilos of lead muscle. It's probably slightly more because I was probably like a higher body fat percentage in the before and then lower at the after. But yeah, it's, it's probably no more than six kilos or something like that. So it's yeah. not much at the end of the day. Uh, but I think you can see that it makes a huge difference on the look, just having that you know extra six kilos of muscle. Um, but yeah, I do think that you know, kids these days need a bit, be a bit more patient. And um, I, I do also want to mention that you do build muscle very quickly at the start and it slows down ex like a lot. <laughs> like, um, I would say that I probably have like, I probably had like 90% of the muscle I have now by like year three or four. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, it definitely slows down. And I think that's what triggers me a little, I guess, with the, you know, because I don't know, you guys probably haven't read a lot of the comments on some of my Instagram posts, but like um, the posts are generally, if I have a pump and like if I take a photo with a pump, people mm -hmm. like call me out for being a fake natty. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that's the best. What do you mean? That, that would mean, not yeah, trigger I, me. I, 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 yeah, I, that, doesn't, that doesn't trigger me. But then yeah. when I take like a photo when I'm just like woken up in the morning with no food or anything, people like comment and say, oh, I look like this after one year of lifting or I look like this after six months of lifting or something like that. <laughs> so it's just like a different, like you see the duality, the two perspectives, and it's just like really funny that, you know, people would say that. <laughs> oh yeah, like like it's, it's, it's what's it like Instagram reality? I think it's a subreddit yeah. about that. It's, it's just, yeah. um, I think people, yeah, uh, because social media, lighting, mm. the perspective is almost warped. Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's so much fake expectations on people. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of sad as well because I think someone like yourself, you know, they, you know, if, if they think that you're not natty, it's almost like, damn, like, is this what they really think the potential is? They think like it's even less. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's wh yeah. what do they think is naturally achievable? What do you think? That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. There's like two completely opposing perspectives. There's some people that think I'm like a year, like my physique's like a year into lifting. And then there's some people that think I'm completely not natural. And it just really depends on like how I show myself as well. Yeah. It's like, as a, yeah. as a, you got shit genetics or you're, yeah. you're, you're on gear, yeah. you got good genetics. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're actually on Reddit, by the way. Yeah, I know. You're, you're on Natty or times. not. Mo yeah, he's on, times. Moxie is on Natty or not. And um, yeah. I scroll through the comments and it's literally like 50-50 split. Yeah. It's, and I, I love, Xavi, it's like the, the best ever. Like when people <laughs> think that he's on gear, it's like, oh, it must be it's a compliment. You must feel it, so great. That's it, a compliment. It's it such a compliment. A compliment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it honestly is a compliment. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I tell people I'm on gear. <laughs> you know, I, I try to push it more. Uh, <laughs> And they question, like, are you sure? 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 Or they're like, sir, this is a Wendy's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I try my best to push that, you know, I'm on gear, but uh, yeah. yeah. That's going to be me when I bench two plates. They're going to be like, sir, <laughs> what, are you, what are you ordering? I don't need to know this. <laughs> yeah. It's one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but um but yeah like like i like i said like you know your perspective is is really refreshing but it's like needed because you know like it or not you're gonna have a lot of people that look up to you um as a role model i feel like uh because the fact that you're natural the fact that uh you're consistent with your training and um yeah like just the way you sort of have lived that life it's it's uh I guess I'm trying to show like a different perspective to a lot of the, you know, the people nowadays, because there are obviously 
I, I would actually say a lot of those, you know, influencers and stuff that are getting called out for being fake naturals, a lot of them are natural, but they're being called out because they are, you know, genetically elite and, you know, they, they just put on muscle so easily. Um, but obviously they are the fake natties too, but um, I'm just saying, and for me personally, I feel like I'm someone that, you know, that has decent muscle bellies, but I don't put on muscle that easily. It's like taking me, you know, so long to like, mm. like this. And I'm like 73 kilos when I'm lean. <laughs> it's like, that's like light as hell, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, so I guess I'm trying to show a perspective of that or someone that's a little bit more normal. Yeah, it's just been consistent and just like worked <laughs> consistently. Yeah, I mean, like you know, you go to high school kids at sixteen that want to look like you in a like, year's time, and I'm sure some it's of like... them can as well. Like some of these genetically gifted people that can you know, just put on muscle and keep mm. putting on muscle. So yeah, it's but there's for the majority of people, it's going to take time. Mm. And uh, thoughts on creatine, nanny or not? Is that is that uh, creatine? Is it? <laughs> I mean, it's it found can... in beef. It's found in beef, right? So okay, okay. Just checking. Just checking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, mean, don't know what creatine I... you're taking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> do uh, anything to add, Shavi? Uh, just last couple from me. So to get your physique, your six pack, is there something that you do that not many other people do? Can you reveal that? Um. I guess it's just the eating. I'm pretty diligent with my like macro tracking when I can be. Um, I do have, I do go off, you know, the radar a bit sometimes and just start binging a bit, but I think everyone's human and they, that's okay. But I, I'm someone that can get back on track very, very easily. Like my mindset to get back on track, things like that are quite good. I would say like, if I feel like I am going off, off the rail a bit, I will be able to like pull myself pull myself back in so i guess that is something that i probably do a bit better than a lot of people i've been quite consistent with that cool yeah and last one for me six packs is it worth it <laughs> um if you go to a rave it's pretty worth it <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's, you that's need all to we know. needed to know <laughs> no, like... <laughs> Oh, you, you, but mainly, uh, mainly for the dudes. Yeah, 